We are live. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to everybody in the room here uh, in Porter Shed Ado in Market Street in Galway. And a huge, huge welcome to our uh, online audience uh, joining us from all over Ireland. Um, Please be noisy in the chat uh, online. Uh, let us know where you're dialing in from today, uh, where you're watching from, uh, who you're with, who you are. Um, for everybody in the room, shh. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. Uh, feel free to relax and be comfortable. Uh, they should be hearing me and not you. Um, uh, but uh, you're all very welcome for our uh, final NDRC Pre-Accelerator Showcase of 2022. Uh, I'm your host, I'm Rosemary Gallagher, the Program Manager here at the Porter Shed and also the NDRC Regional Lead for the West and Northwest. And I'm very, very uh, happy to hand it over to our CEO, uh, Mary Rogers, who's going to come on stage and do our welcome. While Mary's getting ready, I'm just going to talk you through what's happening here today. Uh, we just have a couple of short minutes to get welcome and then we're going to jump into our first batch of startup pitches. We have 21 startups pitching here today. So we've broken them up into three batches and lots and lots of them are in the room with us and uh, lots more joining online. So please, please do continue to give them encouragement in the chat uh, and let us know uh, how, what you thought of their fantastic pitches. We're also going to be joined uh, for a found, ah, there's more people arriving. Hello, guys. <laughs> uh, we're also going to be joined with, uh, by a founder, uh, by Connor Quain from City Swift for a founder interview during the break before jumping into our next group of startup pitches. Um, and about half one, we are going to unveil the calendar for the NDRC 2023 so we can let you know what's happening next year. Then we have our final block of uh, startup pitches before we wrap up with some, some good news uh, and uh, festive cheer for you all. We will be finishing promptly at two o'clock um, and that'll be our event. Mary, please join me on stage uh, and get things kicked off for us. Good afternoon. Yeah. Huh? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you're all very welcome to the final NDRC Pre-Accelerator Showcase of 2022. My name is Mary Rogers. I'm the CEO of Galway City Innovation District. Um, and it's my pleasure and privilege to welcome you all here today to Portishead Ado at uh, 15 Market Street. The NDRC Pre-Accelerator supported 85 startups from across the island of Ireland this year, getting accelerator and revenue ready to our six-week customer-focused program. The program is delivered regionally and culminates in this hybrid showcase where we will debut these early stage startups to the wider startup community, including investors, corporate members and peers. You're all very welcome here today for everyone who has traveled. We'll get to you in a minute. Um, in many ways, this is their debut to the Irish ecosystem. So we're honored to have so many uh, join us in the Porter Shed today. We have mentors, investors and friends of the Porter Shed. Uh, in the room today. So thank you all and thanks for your time and support during the program. Our quarterly showcase event moved hybrid in 2022. We're delighted to go to hybrid instead of fully remote. It's been brilliant. Um, this year, over 150 people have attended in person with over 400 more joining online. You're also very welcome to the brand new innovation space of Portishead Ado. Um, so this is the third building in the Galway City Innovation District. We soft launched it three weeks ago, and I believe this might be our 11th event. Um, so it's been kind of mad, um, but and fun. Uh, so we now have 30,000 square foot of innovation space in downtown Galway City. So engage um, with the Porter Shed and the NDRC so that you can stay up to date on all the events and happenings that are happening in Galway and around the country. 21 innovation-driven startups will pitch today, and they're solving problems ranging from employee onboarding to making the world and workplace accessible to sign language users. We're taking on the housing crisis, much needed. Um, bottlenecks in pharma manufacturing and tantruming toddlers. I told you I get it. <laughs> uh, we learn about scope creep, plug and play DevOps, and how to make your business environmentally sustainable. Lots and lots of interesting startups to pitch here today. Our guests have joined us in person from Dublin, Roscommon, Paris, and of course, all over Galway and the wider region. And that's not to mention the 140 plus guests registered online from all over Ireland and internationally as well. As Rosemary said, let us know where you're from in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. This is an interactive session, so engage online, in person, and obviously on social media. 
before I finish up, it would be remiss of me not to give a massive thank you to Rosemary Gallagher, our program manager, and to Shant, uh, who worked tirelessly both on the showcase and the pre-accelerator over the past number of months. And a big shout out to all the team leads, uh, Eshna in Republic of Work, Maeve in RDI, Victoria in Dogpatch, and Jake for bringing the team together. It's been an amazing year. Uh, we're so proud to be a partner of the NDRC and the pre-accelerator and all the early stage startups. Uh, we wish everyone a fantastic day today. Um, I hope you enjoy meeting the startups and you get to engage after and stay around for some, some pizza. Um, welcome, enjoy, happy Christmas. Back to you. Super. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. We're going to jump straight into the first block of seven pitches. Um, please remember, if you're joining online, to give each other uh, lots of encouragement in the chat. Um, and we'll also be sh uh, sharing bridge links so you can connect with the, the, the founders after the event. For those of you who are in the room here, we're going to do this a little bit like NUI Galway graduation. Pardon me, University of Galway graduation. Um, so please hold your applause till the end. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to hand over to production to tee up the first group of pitches. Knock, knock, who's there? Batman, I mean, Bolcha, your go-to for new employee onboarding. Did you know 88% of people have had a poor onboarding experience? And this is because onboarding is time consuming, ad hoc and spread across different tools. Everybody feels the effects of poor onboarding for the new employee at the very least, they feel stressed and anxious. At the worst, they leave and all the time spent interviewing and upskating is wasted. 33% of new hires leave within the first three months. For the company, it affects employee engagement, satisfaction, and retention. Did you know to replace an employee can cost anywhere between 20 and 200% of that employee's annual salary? Companies today are spending eight hours per new hire organizing onboarding plans. And this is because they're using tools that are not optimized for the onboarding process. So introducing Forja, a B2B application to centralize how companies do onboarding, better connecting new hires with their teams. Encouraging teams to collaborate when onboarding new employees, create plans from scratch, or choose one from our library of templates. All to save time by checking calendars and suggesting free slots for meetings and events, making new employees feel better connected with a personalized space for them, their buddy, and team. As organizations with strong onboarding processes improve employee productivity by 70%. And using our data to recommend actions that improve employee integration, upskilling, and well-being, ultimately leading to better attention. 69% of new hires are more likely to spend at least three years with a company if they have a positive onboarding experience. So who needs our help the most? The two, the two segments that we are targeting are companies that are currently scaling from C to Series C and sales teams, such as our customer split metrics. Both of these segments have budget, are hiring regularly, and usually don't have an optimized onboarding experience. The cost of onboarding employees in the EU is moderately estimated at 27 billion. And by focusing on scaling companies, there's an opportunity of 53 million, which is 5% of this targeted market. There is no outright winner in the onboarding space. Tools such as Personio and Bamboo HR have elements of onboarding, but are usually just a checklist. Companies are repurposing tools such as Trello, Confluence, Excel, and more to plan their onboarding. We are currently engaging our trial customers on their willingness to pay. Some options are pay per hire or a monthly or yearly subscription. Right, so where are we today? Our product is live and in beta with four trial customers. Three that are fully set up on Falcha and want to be set up soon. And our goal is to have five high quality early adopters by the end of the year. We are a team of five founders. Both Tom and Chris are engineering wizards. Luke is a master of finance and business operations. And Daniel and I are both experts in the product design thinking process from research through to delivery and engineering support. We have also built relationships with HR specialists as we build up a network of advisors. So, if you're unsure as to how best to onboard and retain your new employees, Fulch is here for you. Sign up for free today at Fulch.io. Hi, Gina here, and I'm here to talk about Scopy. Simple scope approvals. What is scope creep? It's when extra services or features are added to the project that were not inside the quote. And it costs businesses over 78 billion per year. Meet Dave. Dave is the owner of Explosive Digital. His quote for a new website has just been approved. He gets started and asks the owner for the logo. Oh, we don't have one. Can you quickly whip something up? Sure, Dave can make one. Scope creep. 
an extra hour of work, not in the quote. The cycle repeats and the scope creeps. The big problem, Dave's time is undervalued. All those extra requests add up and even have the potential to add another zero to the invoice. Dave is not alone. The problem spans across design, IT, construction. I'm sure you can name a few too. Scopy is a simple scope approval tool that helps people like Dave create and manage live scopes with his customers. They can see the value of their new requests and either approve and add them to the quote or remove them completely. Either way, Dave gets paid for his time or spends it how he wants. There are scoping tools out there, but they're buried in complex project management systems. Scopy focuses on scope creep and helps businesses profit from it. Scopy is a SaaS subscription model with tiered pricing. Premium features include custom branding and unlimited projects. The global business productivity software market is valued at $45 billion and is growing 13.8%. Compared to the percentage of the market our competitors hold, Scopy's obtainable market is 50 million. To date, we've validated the problem with over 100 potential customers. We've designed the software in Figma, and our MVP is due March 2023. From there, we'll test with real users, iterate, build, and scale. We're talking with investors and plan to close 2023. Julia and I met over 15 years ago while studying design. Since then, I've gone on to win awards in digital design, while Julian has worked in business operations and gained her master's in marketing. Now, we've come together to solve one of the biggest problems for small business. Change is good, so get paid for it. Hi, I'm Peter. And I'm here to introduce you to Omni.io, helping brands deliver an historic experience online by bringing the human touch to e-commerce. When was the last time you bought a car online or a really expensive watch? How about when you had 20 tabs open when you were searching your next oven and you got so confused that you just gave up? It used to be simple. You went to the store, had conversation and got what you wanted. But now it's all about e-commerce. So let's zoom in on your e-commerce experience. Do you remember when you had to explain something complex over a chat on your mobile? Pick up a phone to discuss what you see on your screen or your last meaningful conversation with the chatbot? For brands, this bad experience means abandoned baskets, disappointed customers, lost revenue. Our clients have one simple problem, how to deliver the same customer experience online as in a brick and mortar environment. So we decided to help them with a video-led customer engagement platform. Like in real life, you go to the website, click on a widget and connect with the agent. No installations, no scheduling appointments, just instant one-on-one -on -one conversation. Show and tell either from the shop floor or by sharing their screen, accelerating the process thanks to a number of in-call features and full enterprise great admin capabilities. Supporting clients in the virtual world can increase conversion rate by up to 10x, drive up the order value and reduce returns. We have three potential revenue streams, subscription, technology partnership, and professional services. Live commerce initiated sales could account for as much as 20% of all e-commerce. And the global retail tech market is expected to reach 388 billion. Live commerce is still in its infancy, but of course, we have a number of competitors. Our competitors are mostly focused on streaming experience, which puts them on a collision path with TikToks of this world. We're focused on one-on-one -on -one engagement, which can give us an advantage if we manage to accelerate our sales. Today, Omni is live, fully built in-house with capacity to ship new features. Thanks to Omni, LG can deliver unparalleled customer experience. Our Polish furniture giant converts browsers to buyers, just like they would in their physical stores. We plan to enter NDRC accelerator in a Q1 with early seed right after. We expect to reach around 40K MRR in a Q4. 
We have a cross-functional and experienced team. Arek, our CTO, is the whiz behind Domi. He built it and is ready to bring it to the next level. Shemek, serial entrepreneur, and me, CEO and co-founder. I delivered millions in revenue for best-in-class SaaS companies over the last decade. Thanks, and looking forward to discussing this opportunity with you. From dinner parties to celebrations like Chris Names, communions, birthdays and anniversaries, people love to entertain and the trend to mark milestones and create experiences to enjoy with friends and family continues to grow. Hi, I'm Yvonne, founder of Party Table, an occasions platform that will transform how you organise events. In research we carried out, time poor consumers reported finding vendors as the biggest pain point when organising events, often relying on Google searches, filling in inquiry forms, using Pinterest and Instagram for inspiration, but then having no easy way to check vendors' availability in book. On the other side, vendors, often small and medium-sized businesses, struggle to reach customers. They waste valuable time in social media and other marketing tools to try to grow their following and generate leads. Party Table solves these problems by being a one-stop shop for all occasion requirements. Our web-based platform allows consumers to find all the vendors they need. They can search under various categories, instantly check their availability, create favorites lists and book and pay for multiple vendors in one place, saving hours of time and putting the joy back into hosting. Party Table is also the go-to resource for tips, ideas and inspiration when planning your next event. Vendors can create profiles and upload their menu or product offering. Our purpose-built booking software features a calendar tool to manage availability and bookings. The global party and events market is huge, but initially we will target Ireland and the UK where we believe the serviceable market will be for corporate events and key life occasion celebrations at a sum of 200 million euro, and we will target 5% of this. We know that events is one of the top search for categories on Pinterest. So as customers actively seek out inspiration, we will use engaging content for initial customer acquisition and to make them regular use of party table. On the vendor side, we are currently exploring a commission and monthly subscription business model where vendors can create a basic listing for free and will pay a 10% commission on orders or opt for an enhanced profile feature for a monthly subscription. Our competition falls into three buckets. They cater specifically for weddings, leaving a gap in the market for those looking to celebrate all other life occasions. Sites where you can request a quote, but have limited information about the vendors and their offering. Party Slate, our closest competitor in the US, has had huge success, raising over $11 million for its platform that connects people with leading event professionals. Party Table will build on this further by not only providing the inspiration and vendor information, but also allow consumers to check availability and book their chosen vendors. To date, we've conducted quantitative research with 200 consumers and have done further qualitative research in the form of 30 in-depth interviews with customers and vendors. We've also designed a prototype of the platform and are costing out an MVP. I'm currently the sole founder and team member. I have 15 years experience in sales and marketing in FMCG, and I have experience working with aggregators like Just Eat and Deliveroo. I am also working with some great advisors from food, tech and media backgrounds. So if you're a party vendor or a party planning enthusiast, please come talk to us to find out more. Would you trust an organization that scored themselves a C- minus on the compliance and effectiveness of controls? My name is Owen. We are 3B. Our customers range from startups to enterprise tech to manufacturing, and we help them comply efficiently with legal and regulatory requirements and the standards and frameworks needed to satisfy customer expectations. Georgina is head of risk and compliance for a company that have both software and hardware products in the market. They have ISO 9001 and did work recently on GDPR, but now also have a requirement for ISO 27001 certification from a customer. Georgina and her colleagues initially struggled to figure out what actually needs to be done, in what sequence and how to actually implement the requirements in the organization. They finally figure all this out and then struggle to ensure that the various tasks for the project are done on schedule. It's all the time and Georgina needs to show auditors evidence of compliance from across the organization. They struggle to pull the information together as it is very decentralized, but somehow they pass. And Georgina's team has to maintain these systems and do it all again and again. Okay, Georgina, breathe. Imagine clicking a button and all those requirements load into actionable items using easy to understand language. These actions pull from the information that you have already populated into the software, reducing the workload of completing the tasks. You work with your colleagues, external partners and suppliers efficiently through one central dashboard and complete the work effortlessly. You breeze through those audits, your colleagues easily satisfy customer requests for reports, certs and answers to questionnaires, and you can do this for any set of requirements. And it happens as if by magic. That's the power of 3B.
Our business model is a per user subscription. We have a consultant edition allowing them to manage clients through 3P for free, where their clients have a paid account with us. We estimate consultants being able to manage three to five times the number of clients by using 3B without additional resources. We estimate that around 20% of organizations use management systems at this scale, encompassing quality, information security, privacy, all the management systems, and 3B can help demonstrate excellence within these. We estimate the global TAM at 1.54 billion, but third-party research has much higher estimates with Gartner putting integrated risk management at 8 billion alone. Our research shows up to 75% of organizations use documents, emails, spreadsheets, uh, and shared folders for their management systems and risk management. This correlates with low estimates of compliance and effectiveness from our opening slide. Companies who use software products are caught in a mire of licensing, often requiring multiple products to manage and maintain all the requirements, and sometimes still requiring excessive consultancy support. None offer the combined approach of managed action-driven programs with guidance and all the tools required native to the platform like 3B. We are self-funded and bootstrapped to date, and our prototype was built using a feasibility study grant. We have over 85 customer discoveries completed, and our MVP is due for completion at the end of Q1, with paid beta testing to be completed early Q3 2023. We are the right team due to our experience, both with clients and with previous startups. We've learned many lessons. I'm Owen Kenny, and I've worked for over 15 years consulting to SMEs in quality, security, and data protection. Derek Mizak is an information and cybersecurity expert and an experienced certification body auditor. And Dominic O'Toole has over 20 years experience in design, build, and support of large-scale software systems and managing multinational teams. Help us make work easier for Georgina and our organization. Hi, I'm Leo from Subby the SaaS Customer Metrics and Analytics Company. Meet Ross, the CFO of a SaaS company operating in multiple markets. In the US, his company uses Stripe and PayPal for their payments. In Brazil, they use Rapid. While in India, their customers prefer Razorpay. Each month, he spends up to 10 days gathering details from each payment source to create metrics for his board and investors. The problem is, by the time he's done, the data is already out of date. And he's on loan. There are 28,000 SaaS companies worldwide, and 79% of these produce metrics report at least once a month. In a recent survey, 69% said that the manual correlation and calculation of SaaS performance metrics is a top challenge, and a lack of real-time analytics and on-demand reporting puts them at a serious competitive disadvantage. We have a solution. Subby offers a way to take payment data from multiple sources and automatically provide standardized metrics and analytics in real time. We also offer tools to manage offline transactions, such as bank payments from larger enterprise customers, as well as being able to trigger business processes based on customer events like missed payments or upcoming renewals. In addition, all our customers' client data is securely stored on EU-based servers and is fully GDPR compliant. We make money through a tiered subscription model based on number of active subscriptions, as well as offer advanced features and support for premium subscribers. Our ideal customer is a SaaS company operating globally who is at least two years old with annual revenues of between 1 and 10 million and who are looking to scale their business and need to show a systematic process for managing their subscriptions and their performance to investors. The global SaaS market is worth 272 billion. Currently, companies spend 2% of their revenue each year managing their customer subscriptions. This equates to 5.4 billion. We are looking to focus on the European market, which is valued at 1.1 billion. And specifically, we are targeting companies with annual re revenue between 1 and 10 million. This represents 47% of the market and gives us a target market of 536 million. There are a number of competitors operating, including ChartMogul, ProfitWell, and Bearmetrics. Most of these offer simple solutions to import and generate metrics, but provide limited options for invoicing and non-credit card payments, which are important for servicing enterprise customers. The team currently consists of Leo Moore, I've worked in Fujitsu, Microsoft, and more recently, the Dutch fintech Bunk. I also found a number of startups, including Monrid CRM, which I successfully exited in 2020. I have 25 years experience in software development and technical sales. We have an MVP up and running and are in the process of working with test customers and finished the year with a positive cash balance of 120,000. The next step is to build out our solution and add additional payment providers based on the customer requirements. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Peter, a co-founder of Blinksoft. We accelerate and de-risk pharma manufacture through a tailored SaaS solution. This is Avril. She's been made the site lead of a major new pharma manufacturing facility. She's worked hard 20 years for this job. 
The big pharma company is sinking 1 billion into getting this site up and running. Avril has assured them that she can deliver 100 kilograms of product in three years. The problem for Avril is that in complex pharma manufacturing, there is no clarity. Knowledge is fragmented across hundreds of documents, databases, drawings, diagrams, emails, and even people's heads. A clear and simple picture does not exist. This leads to errors, delays, and lost market share. These are the very real and common fears keeping Avril up at night. Blinksoft's SaaS platform lets pharma manufacturers design, collaborate, and simplify their complex processes. Users can create a much needed, clear, single source of truth for their manufacturing. This clarity reduces errors and gaps by 50%. It also speeds up manufacturing setup and reduces overall manufacturing costs by 10%. What you can see here is a live beta version of the platform. With the help of Blinksolve, the facility successfully got up and running, and Avril delivered ahead of schedule and under budget. Blinksolve differentiates from others in the space by combining clarity and ease of use with the high degree of control and traceability required in pharmaceuticals. We are first movers of an end-to-end platform of this kind. It's been tailored from the ground up for pharma. Our model is SaaS user licenses sold in batch. This is through direct sales. 350 billion is spent on pharma manufacturing every year. Blinksoft can create 35 billion of value through making manufacturing more efficient. The global pharma manufacturing software market is 5.2 billion. This is expected to triple by 2029, where our SOM is 130 million. We've received a letter of endorsement from Barry O'Brien, who was the Pfizer manufacturing lead of the COVID vaccine. We have launched the beta and are in talks with several interested companies on a pilot starting Q1 2023. The team is myself having experience as a process engineer in Pfizer and in MSD. My CTO and co-founder Bart has experience in startups, has previously led highly technical teams and is a world-class builder. We combine the two technical domains needed to execute and deliver a solution for this problem. We're also very lucky to have several experienced advisors on board too. So if you or anyone you know is struggling with pharma manufacturer like Avril, please get in touch. Welcome back everyone. Uh, After our first batch of brilliant startup pitches, I don't know about the rest of the founders in the room and the other team leads, but uh, I was definitely mouthing some of the lines along with you there. (laughs) Um, And uh, we hope that those of you uh, who are joining us online uh, really enjoyed that that group as well. Uh, So I am delighted to be joined uh, by, uh, whoop, what am I doing? (laughs) Uh, I'll go back. (laughs) Uh, I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Connor, one of our own uh, Portershed company, City Swift. Um, Thank you for doing this. Yeah, sure. Good, we're good to have you. Um, so uh, we have about 15 minutes for this founder interview, uh, and then we're going to go, go back into uh, the next group of pitches. Connor, tell us. Tell us about City Swift, first of all. Tell us a bit about yourself um, uh, and what, what brought you here today. Yeah, um, so um, Connor Quinn is, is my name. Um, I'm head of finance in City Swift. Um, City Swift, I suppose, what, what do we do? Um, City Swift is a software platform. Um, whereby we help um, bus operators optimize their their networks. So in short, we ingest data from all their data, effectively, whatever they have, location, ticket and data, pull it in uh, to our platform, combine it with other sources of data that might be impactful on how they run their uh, operations. Um, And with that all combined, um, we're able to then, I suppose, support bus operators in optimizing how they, they run their network. So maybe they might want to, obviously, getting buses on time is the big thing. I think, you know, here in Ireland, it's obviously a big focus and, you know, in any city. Uh, so we're helping bus operators try and improve uh, on-time performance of buses. But also then there's other aspects to maybe how they want to their businesses to perform. So maybe, you know, reduce costs in some areas, um, obviously improve improve services so more passengers will use public transportation and that's the big thing for us like working in public transportation is it's 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 really great because we're we're trying to drive that uh, move towards um shared transportation rather than everyone fun, taking fun their intended. car to work no <laughs> <laughs> uh, super and connor tell us a little bit about your own role in city swift 
Myself, yeah, I suppose um, I'm the, the finance guy, um, head of finance. I've been here in, I've been in City Swift, I say here because we're, we're a quarter shed company, um, for the last four years. Um, I came from uh, down from Dublin, so I moved west. Uh, I, I used to work in Deloitte, but uh, I joined the two, the two founders, Alan and Brian, uh, Alan Farley and Brian O'Rourke. They're both from Longford as well, like myself, so we're representing the Midlands. Um, and yeah, been here the last couple of years, four years, um, and um, finance focus, but obviously supporting supporting the guys and um, managing all I suppose, okay. business operations. Uh, roughly, how many are in the City Swift team now? We have since I last counted about sixty. I think sixty at the minute. Wow, so amazing. yeah, a lot of growth the last couple of years. Super. Uh, your customers are some of the huge names in transport. I noticed uh, National Express, Metroline, the Oxford bu uh, Bus Company, a lot of UK names. Yeah. Um, what made Galway the right environment for you guys to sale, scale City Swift? Yeah, I suppose um, with uh, with being from from Longford, uh, as I said, the two the two lads who founded it, uh, founded the company, you know, trying to, to to start a business in the Midlands is a bit trickier, especially if it's a SaaS business. Um, did a couple of years there, and I suppose the move to Galway was driven really by um, talent um, and the environment that's in Galway as well. is It's really, it's really, uh, it's a great environment to work in, especially if you're a tech business. You know, the Porter Shed is a, a big reflection of that. Um, and yeah, like being able to scale a business, you need to have top talent, and like hiring uh, great people is is critical really to to to, to grow your business. Um, at speed, which obviously we want to do, um, but yeah, like I think Galway in general, the, the environment here is is really it's really healthy for tech businesses, and it's growing um, year on year. We're seeing obviously Bonham Key is up and running now, and you see a lot of big tech companies coming coming to Galway, so it's an attractive place for 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 people to come and work, and obviously it's a great city and. Good for the pint of Guinness uh, down in Shop Street as well. The, the check is being handed to someone <laughs> to the finger. Um, and you're not too far away from home. We have a founder that told me he's, uh, he lives in Roscommon because it's the most connected spot in all of Ireland. Yeah. Long time <laughs> um, couldn't challenge that, but yeah. There you go. Um, so we're kind of in a whatever this economic moment is, now that we all have PhDs in economics from uh, listening to uh, the, the news for the last couple of, I suppose, mm. years at this stage. Um, but... Uh, City Search has just closed a five million euro uh, round. Um, yeah. How the heck did you do that? <laughs> yeah, I suppose um, it kind of goes back to pretty simple business economics. I think you know, really uh, having um, a strong team in place, um, a good product that you've found a product market fit. You've got a big um, market opportunity that you can take on. Um, and I think if you have those core elements right, even from starting out um, with, with your idea that you have your research done and you know there's an opportunity there, the follow on and, and future investments, you know, they will come because you're, you're going to need further financial support to, to grow and, and ideally internationalize the business. Um, and that's effectively what we've done Like over the last year or two. There's been a lot of work on product development, I think, and where we have the platform now, it's, it's in a really top place, you know, where bus operators are, you know, going to City Swift to make high level, sea level decisions across um, the, the, their operations and the impact that has on cities and how transportation and, and people move around cities. But to go back to the question, I suppose, you know, with the fundraising piece, um, the nuts and bolts of that as well as, you know, you know, having your preparation for, you know, due diligence, getting your information uh, in order, being able to portray the, everything that's good in the business and also highlighting things that are that are issues that you know we've dealt with and I think um, being really clear in your message to investors as well is is, is super important um, and I think you know we've we've been pretty good at that to date obviously we can always improve um, but I think you know we're funded now and in a position where we think we can kind of bring the business to, to another level over the next couple of years. We've got to see that in the Porter Shed as you guys get ready for your um, uh, your investor meetings and your board meetings. Um, yeah. uh, you put so much care and thought into it. Um, yeah. And you obviously have like a really powerful board behind you. So can you tell us a little bit about like the makeup of that board, how they have helped support your business? And I know that this round was made up of a lot of uh, follow on investors, people who've been with you since the beginning. So how did you how did you find those right people for you? 
Yeah, look, I think at the, the outset, um, we, 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 you know, we got good advisors on board. Our chairman, Mike McGeerty, he, he was the CEO of Carishaller, has been a super support for us over the last couple of years. You know, even around Galway with, with Westpic and with uh, WDC, you have really helped us in, in you know, deciding what's a, a right board. Because I think the structure of the board sets the tone for the business because we have, um, I know Bob Montgomery is on our board. Um, he's an industry expert. You've got people who have been there and done it before. So getting the right mix of um, people on your board is, is really important. And obviously then um, I think, you know, preparing, having your information correct, um, not treating it as just an exercise that you have to report up the line. You should be trying to get a, as much advice from, from your board as possible. Use them as a support because at the end of the day, you know, they've put money into the business but they want to see that money grow um, and they're there to support you in doing that. And I think being open to, you know, criticism and advice and all that is, is very important um, as a founding team because, you know, none of us, you know, we're all, I mean, we're young um, we're, and trying to, to grow a business. Uh, you got to lean on people who've done it before, mm. who's experienced. And I think that's that's a, a really important way to approach um management of your board and it's really human as well because i think um from the the startup perspective we're obviously kind of going and where is the money and how do i get the money but uh to think of their perspective as well and the things that motivate and excite them yeah. um and feed into that i think is yeah absolutely i think um it's all you know it's very much there they're humans they're, they're normal people just like like us um and you need to break down that barrier of just engaging and communicating with, with your investors and and selecting the right ones as well is, is very important at the outset because you know we've had investors who would join the business or invest in the business um back in 2017-18 and they're still with us today um you're with them for a long time so you got to choose the right ones when you're choosing them because it's 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 not it's not it's like a kind of like a, a marriage in a way mm -hmm. um it's not for the short term um and yeah getting the right people on board is is very important so it's it's not always you know you pitching to them they also have to give something back i think to the, to the company so I think that's very important for uh people going out into the the investment arena that you know you also have to select the right the investor for you yeah yeah, we don't we don't say that often enough, I think. Um, uh, speaking of people, um, we get to see the really gorgeous company culture that you have uh, here in the Portershed. Um, the City Swift group are always um, fun to chat with uh, over over our weekly blast lunches. And um, how did you uh, like? Did you how intentionally did you go about doing that? I think you um, uh, you've been with uh, City Swift since the early days. And how did you expand a team that had that culture in it? And how do you keep it up? I think it's you know when you're when you're bringing people into the business, it's the right characters. When you're when you're at the hiring stage, um, interviewing people, trying to figure out um, you know where their stage as stage is at uh, in their career. Are they motivated to um, grow with the business? Uh, I think for us, you know, we're a scale up business. So you know, you join a, a company like a lot of the, the companies discussed today. You're, you're going to be on a trajectory with the company. So your career should, uh, in theory, evolve with, with, with the company. And I think bringing people in who want to go on that journey creates a culture of, um, you know, challenging each other, uh, you know, putting yourself, I suppose, in difficult positions that you're able to get through. Um, I, I think that is fed into our culture where th there's a nice mix of, you know, we work hard, but we're able to collaborate and, and um we challenge each other as well. So I think all that, people enjoy being challenged. And I think that's the, the nice culture that we have at the moment. I've noticed we, we, you were uh, working in the Safari event space uh, over the last couple of days. Yeah. And it was this gorgeous mix of like really hard work and then a lot of laughter um, and tons of chit chat during the breaks. Like it, it, it's really, it's just very palpable. I think we, we all get a big kick out of it as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, fundraise done. Uh, what is up next for City Swift? Yeah, look, I think um, there's been a lot of great, great work by the team over the last couple of years. But looking forward, um, it's really now about you know internationalizing the the product that we have. You know, we're we're leading in the UK. Um, we've got huge opportunities in um, the US, Asia, and um, obviously expanding throughout Europe, the, the Middle East as well. So we obviously have a an international platform that can work in any city in the world. So it's um, it's going to be about really just 
growing the business internationally over the next couple of years. And obviously, our HQ here in Galway, it's going to be done from here. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely exciting times ahead. Super. Thank you so much, Connor. Um, nice. We can applaud. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just don't go this second. Cool. I told them all they had to hush for the entire session, so I now have to tell them when they're allowed to unhush. Um, so to our folks online, uh, uh, please also give Connor some love in the chat. Um, we are just going to jump into our next block of startup pitches, and we will see you back on the other side. Hello, I would like you to meet Nora. Nora is running late for work again. She is upset and distressed because yet again, her toddler is tantruming. And this is happening a lot now. And it's happening in the morning times when she's trying to get out to work on time. 100% of toddlers will tantrum. And this can cause a problem for busy working parents because the stress and distress that this causes will follow them into the workplace. Nora is late for work. She is upset when she gets there. She's distracted and off task and her work performance is being severely impacted. Luckily for Nora, her colleague Helen is also a HR manager in the organization where Nora works. She has a very large budget to ensure the retention and motivation of colleagues in the organization. Helen has recruited Toddler Talk to deliver a parental support program for Nora as part of a workplace well-being initiative. We do this with an interactive learning platform, on-demand content, and access to one-to-one -one and small group consultation where individualized queries and concerns are addressed. Nora has been working on the platform for over a week now, and she has reported a significant decrease in tantruming. She is much happier coming to work and she is getting there on time, so much so that she has turned her attention to how to promote optimal speech, language and communication development for her toddler, another area that Toddler Talk supported. My name is Camilla Marks. I am the founder of Toddler Talk. I have been a parental consultant for over 20 years. I have been a former government advisor in the area of early childhood development and positive behaviour support. I have a master's degree in psychology. I am a board certified behaviour analyst and a fully qualified teacher. The Toddler Talk team consists of myself, our our CTO with over 20 years of experience and we are backed up with, by a team of early child care professionals and business advisors with years of experience and expertise in their field. Our business model is simple. We offer a B2B annual membership fee to access the Toddler Talk learning platform and we also offer a B2C annual membership fee for individual consumers to access the Toddler Talk platform. Our market size across Ireland, the UK and the US has a TAM of 5.5 billion and a SOM of 295 million. There are many parental support coaches in the area offering once-off live webinar events to large organizations. By offering ongoing engagement with colleagues and on-demand content, Toddler Talk stands out from the crowd. Pepe also stands out as a competitor, but they do not offer support in the toddler milestone stage area. Since launching, Toddler Talk has attracted two corporate customers. We have over 550 members interacting with our online resources. We've had over 6,000 visitors to our website and 50,000 plus all-time page views. So if you're a HR manager or a well-being manager or a benefits manager or a parent looking for support, let's get talking. Hi, I'm Colm. My co-founder, Constantine, and I have created Home Buyers Hero to tackle one of the biggest global challenges of our generation, housing supply. Home Buyers Hero will make homes cheaper and much more plentiful by using buyer demand data to de-risk residential construction. And the core problem, of course, is that home builders have to endure huge amounts of financial, planning, and construction risk before they know they have buyers or enough of them. And of course, home buyers around the world face constricted supply of new homes because builders find it difficult to bear the risk of building homes and instead tinder to go build a hotel. Our solution is simple. We want to involve home buyers at the earliest stages of residential property development. And the effects of this simple change are profound. Risk drops, certainty increases and construction costs drop as new construction methods and technologies are enabled at scale, such as off-site manufacturing. Buyer data plus our processes equals, well, expressions of interest from industry. They completely understand the benefits of our platform. Our product is that, a platform to empower buyers to declare their interest in a home in a given area while also verifying their capacity to purchase so that we can use that rich data to then de-risk large-scale residential construction projects from concept through planning and eventually construction. So we firstly publicize area, areas of interest for buyers, then we capture their demand needs in data. 
and home builders and planners can then use some of that data to inform stakeholder consultation as well as good planning and design based on actual market response. When the home builder is ready to go, we then move to our novel processes of loosely binding builders and buyers together to enable a symbiosis which gets home buyers on a path to home ownership while having the freedom to change their mind and move around our ecosystem, but also dramatically reduce risks for home builders. That's a win-win situation if ever there was one. So for a flat fee of 1,000 euros per home, payable by the builder, buyers and home builders can work together on Home Buyers Hero to bring developments of all sizes to life. And based on that model, the market globally is approximately 11.7 billion euro uh, per annum. Our serviceable obtainable market at the end of year four is approximately four times the amount of homes Ireland needs to build annually. That's just for context, and it is very achievable. Approved housing bodies and other financial models provide an outlet for builder production. Both have limitations though. For example, both are restricted in terms of suitable locations, as well as the overall volume of new homes they can produce. <clears throat> and they work only for some builders. It can be very difficult to break into the circle or be big enough to tackle the projects of the sizes demanded. Contrast against that, we provide de-risk solutions for every type of home builder, large or small, in every type of location, village or cities. We've had expressions of interest from potential customers and we have some exciting pilots lined up, hopefully and likely to be live before the Christmas period. Our team is ready to deliver. I come from industry and Constantine is a macroeconomist with deep insights on the property market here and abroad. Maria is a proven expert marketer. Ger has a technical expertise to make the magic happen. So together we have the right skills, knowledge and experience and ambition to take Home Buyers Hero to a global market. So if you want to buy a home, if you want to build homes or if you simply like what we are doing, drop us a line at the team at homebuyershero.com. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brendan O'Neill, and I'm on a mission to keep everybody on the same page. Same page is a platform which enables users to create and collate project knowledge spaces. Look, we all know Brenda. One really long email thread with at least five people in CC, rife with contradictions and decision changes to the point where everybody's frustrated and nobody knows what's going on. Some of the most organized people you know, our customers, are wasting up to a full day per week just in managing and distributing meeting notes. We all know Brenda because 75% of companies aren't using project management tools such as Notion or Asana. Our customer discovery has shown that the reason for this is that people find them very difficult to learn or like there's just way too much going on. Our goal is to guide these hesitant note takers to the smart side. With same page, Brenda can take her notes as usual following our clear and intuitive smart tagging system, and with just a little bit of metadata, set our same page engine will generate really powerful views like a Kanban board, decision logs, or Gantt charts, just to name a few. We onboard people with a basic free package, and then we have a tiered per user per month system. Our, our, our most expensive package will give teams access to unlimited project spaces for both internal and external members, as well as premium reporting functionality. Um, our TAM, which consists of the total market for the project management tool space is around 5.4 billion. Our SAM, 960 million. And our target market, which consists of um, tech companies in UK and Ireland with fewer than 50 employees, around 110 million. Our initial rollout strategy is to go to um, project coordinators and executive assistants that still rely on email clients and Microsoft Word in order to track, manage and distribute notes. Our direct competitors are project management tools like Notion, Monday.com and Asana. Our indirect competitors, email clients like Outlook and Gmail. Our goal is to provide a really amazing experience for taking, tracking and distributing notes. We want to be a master of collaborative note taking and not a jack of project management. Me, myself, I'm a software developer for the last five years. I have a master in UX and I now have a proven track record in my ability to build and deploy revenue generating tech platforms. Our beta is now live as of this week. So if you feel like you're Brenda or you know Brenda that you want to edge them into our direction, we'd love to have you on board. And we'd love to take you for, for our initial trial. So please reach out to me on LinkedIn. Thanks a million for listening. Hi everyone, my name is Elise and I'm a co-founder of Ecodes, which is on a mission to revolutionize fashion by enabling brands to step into the circular fashion industry. 
The fashion industry is currently the second largest polluter on earth. And by having to rely on brand marketing strategies only, consumers currently have no means of knowing for sure how sustainable their purchases are. At the same time, 85% of clothes sold aren't recycled or put back into circulation, which is a huge loss of resources as managing the after sales life of clothing could be a key factor in reducing the pollution created by the industry. Currently, the EU is working on a new regulation to tackle the lack of transparency and facilitate the transition towards circularity. By 2024, over 160,000 fashion brands must have a QR code on their product, allowing better tracking of garments throughout the life cycle and enabling action to be taken on project durability and end of life management. This is where eCode comes in. By creating connections with consumers through QR codes, eCode offers a way for businesses to better manage the end of life of their clothing. Through engaging consumers after purchase, Eco generates data across the life cycle of the clothing, enabling brands to offer services such as repair, recycling, and resale directly to consumers. Eco generates revenue through charging the brand a tiered subscription based on volume of clothes per QR code, brand's revenue, level of insights, and level of customization. Eco does enter an exciting emerging market. In Europe, over 24 billion pieces of clothing are produced each year. The incoming regulations require fundamental change and the fashion software market is set to expand from 1.7 billion to be worth $3 billion. There are a number of competitors, but by combining gamification, contextualization of data and putting consumers at the heart of the fashion transformation, we aim to stand out from our competitors. This summer, we took part in one Launchbox, Trinity Student Accelerator Program. We have contacted over 100 brands across Europe and spoken to key players in the EU Commission. Along with launching our prototype and gaining 10 letters of intent to purchase, we've been speaking to over 400 brands in the past weeks at conferences across Ireland, Spain, and France. Myself, Nathan, and Emmett met through our Master's in Sustainability, where we studied where we studied the fashion industry in detail. Our founding team has experience in product management, financial analytics, and leadership. And over the past few months, we've hired a program manager, a community manager, programmer, and behavioral expert to strengthen our competencies and make us the right team to take on the fashion revolution. So if you're a fashion brand or an investor, please make sure to reach out to us. And we would love to open a conversation around eCode and our plans moving forward. Thank you for watching and make sure to stay connected to the future of fashion. My name is Jack Dwyer and I'm the CEO of Vira. Businesses have big problems when it comes to climate change. And at the forefront of this is corporate strategy, which requires leaders to reduce their business's carbon footprint. But the landscape of solutions does not provide them with the education or tools required to do this. Sure, there's a range of carbon calculators and reporting softwares out there, but where's the software that's helping them to reduce their impact? The implications of not focusing on this problem today will lead to imposed financial sanctions from incoming EU policy and a range of brand and reputation effects, which will eventually lead to missed financial savings. Byra is an online platform that embeds environmental sustainability into the culture and performance of organizations. Key stakeholders select a high impact area for employees to upskill in, like biodiversity. And at the same time, they select business actions to help reduce the company's carbon footprint. Once selected, they'll get guidance from key impact coaches in the area through webinars and workshops. And the benefits can be seen in increasing eco-literacy, tying sustainability to performance in a way that's never been done before, and uniting companies for 10 minutes a week. And it's all happening in one platform. At the end of this year, we calculated the impact we made with a key customer in Energy Group. We made the equivalent saving of powering 66 Irish homes for an entire year. Or you can ask one of our many other customers with whom we launched in April and have made revenues of nearly 60,000 euro. But the exciting piece is in the market opportunity. As the macro issue of climate change continues to grow, so too will this behemoth of a market. And through our three-tiered SaaS business model, we will achieve AOR in the rev range of tens of millions. And we've already validated this business model through our revenue generated this year. Our outbound potential looks at strategic and commercial partnerships, which are already underway. 
And our inbound potential looks at ranking number one for corporate sustainability action and education. Our competitive advantage is in business action tracking, measured carbon and financial savings. Second, convenience, 10 minutes per week for employees, no matter where they are. And finally, configurable content for enterprise clients. The co-founding team hail from Wicklow. With expertise across a range of disciplines, Owen Lamazny has built enterprise-grade award-winning software. Jack has delivered e-learning content to tens of thousands of people each day, and Luke is a published scientific author with subject matter expertise. As we capture the Irish market this year and next year, we will expand to the UK and the EU before kicking on to the global stage. So as Vira builds the Adobe Suite for Climate Action, we begin with our learning product. So if this gets you excited, scan the QR code and talk to us today. Imagine starting your first day of school with no understanding of the language you're being taught in. Imagine learning how to read without knowing how to speak. Imagine learning to write, not knowing the sounds of letters. Hi, I'm Mark O'Brien, founder of AI Interpreting, and we are making the physical and virtual world more accessible using digital sign language interpreters. This is the situation deaf kids found themselves in. School was about learning how to live in the world as a linguistic minority, rather than following the standard curriculum. And studies prove this early setback follows them right through their education and into their careers. As a result, sign language users require additional support in the workplace. Current solutions include hiring interpreters for meetings, which are expensive and don't scale to meet demand. It also limits collaboration, because collaboration can only occur when an interpreter is present. AI interpreting has built a two-way text and speech to sign language interpreter, powered by AI. Our solution will empower the user by allowing them to read and write documents in their preferred language and communicate instantly with their colleagues without the need to book an interpreter. Therefore, it can scale to meet demand, significantly removing the current challenges in the existing system. AI interpreting is a SaaS product with a monthly fee. In the UK, the Access to Work scheme provides recipients up to £60,000 a year to spend on workplace supports, such as sign language interpreters. In the US, businesses are required to make reasonable accommodations for their workers under the Americans with Disabilities Act. This includes hiring sign language interpreters for meetings. Globally, governments spend £7 billion annually on sign language interpreters, with £3 billion spent in the US and UK, all of which AI interpreting can address. We will initially target access to work sports markets, as it would give the end user a choice between human interpreters or AI interpreters. This market is worth over £400 million annually, and we predict we can obtain 20% of this. This customer segment will grow significantly over the next decade. Due to a lack of support and flaws in our education system, deaf children have starkly underachieved as well. But thankfully, the situation is improving. With an increase in highly educated sign language users on one side, and technology breaking down barriers to employment on the other, we will see more sign language users enter the workforce. Competitors include in-person and video sign language interpreters. These must be booked in advance, are expensive, and simply cannot scale to meet demands. They also limit collaboration, as it only works when an interpreter is present. So we need one interpreter for every deaf adult in the workforce. Our service allows effective communication and collaboration and is available instantly at a fraction of the cost. Additionally, AI interpreting lets users read and write documents in sign language, just like text-to-speech on your phone. So far, we've built an MVP in British Sign Language and created a route to market. In January, we are piloting our Google Chrome extension, which makes the internet accessible to sign language. Being fluent in British Sign Language and having previously worked in Siri, I have the unique cross-section of skills to solve this problem. If you'd like to join AI interpreting in removing the barriers to employment, reach out to learn more. Thank you. Bills, payments, introductory offers, contracts, meter readings, cancelling subscriptions, year after year after year, if you can be bothered. Switching suppliers and keeping payments stable throughout the year is torture. We recently found out 95% of our customers hate dealing with their bills. People are losing money they can't afford to on utilities. The cost of living has gone mad and bills are getting more complex by the day. Something has to change. In the old days, you'd have to go online and furiously search every corner of the internet looking for better deals and discount codes, offers and cashbacks, and negotiate hard and track your costs. Well, now you have some help from the inside. My name is Adam, and that's why I created One Bill. With One Bill, we're giving consumers back control over their costs. One Bill is a fully managed billing platform. We compare, switch, and save for you. 
We gather all of your bills onto one easy to understand, transparent bill. You'll only have one login for everything where you can track everything and one payment that covers you for all of your bills. And in the background, we'll be saving you money continuously. Our primary revenue is earned through our monthly membership plan, 10, 15, and 25 euros per month, plus the cost of your bills. The utility switching market is worth 1.2 trillion across Europe, UK, and the USA. We know our model works in the USA as one of our competitors operates similarly in a parallel market. We aim to run our pilot scheme in Ireland, targeting 2.3 million households and expanding into the UK and US markets from there. Our competitors include the likes of Rocket Money and Look After My Bills. The greatest difference between us and these competitors is that they are contract bound and reliant on commissions from suppliers. We, however, we work directly for our customer. Our platform is nearly complete and we're aiming to start our free pilot scheme in the next few months. We've already switched around 100 users through our manual processes and we have validated our concept. We made a small gross profit last year and now we're looking to grow our team so that we can handle the numbers that we foresee. I'm Adam and I'm the CEO and I've been in the utilities and sales industry for most of my adult life. I've led energy, telco and merchant service teams and I've been running one bill as a utility brokerage whilst developing our unique processes to help serve our users. We're currently looking for a CTO to help us achieve the high standards that we hold ourselves to. And in the meantime, we're working with some of the most highly accomplished consultants across the industry. We're now looking to start conversations with utility and fintech stakeholders. And next, we look to hire key roles and publicly launch our product. If you'd like more information, please send us an email or scan the QR code. Welcome back to the main room. Um, Fantastic. I, uh, I was watching the expression on everybody's faces in the room here. Um, it is safe to say everybody here knows a Brenda. <laughs> uh, super. Uh, if all of this is giving you a taste for more, don't worry, we are doing it all again next year. Uh, and it's my great pleasure to uh, take this opportunity to unveil the NDRC calendar for 2023. Uh, the NDRC runs very regular programming from hubs all across Ireland, uh, including us in the Porter Shed, uh, and our friends and colleagues in uh, the Republic of Work in Cork. Uh, and we have uh, a program associate in the room here, Gennaro. There we go, hi Gennaro. Um, uh, the RDI hub in Kerry uh, and our, our leaders, Dogpatch Labs uh, in Dublin. Hi Mano. <laughs> so there is always an NDRC uh, event or program uh, happening near you or soon or both. Um, we support founders at every stage of their journey. Where am I? I'm here. Um, we support founders at every stage of their journey, uh, and we're part of a wider ecosystem. So another thing that we do uh, a lot of is help signpost founders to the other supports in our ecosystem, uh, and it's actually really gratifying to see so much of that in the room here as well. Um, so uh, if you're looking for mentors, we have those uh, in our network and in our community and in the room, um, uh, and uh, we work so closely uh, with Enterprise Ireland, New Frontiers, and the other great programs that are there that are out there. Um, we put the founder first, uh, so we will always uh, direct them to uh, the support that we think will help them best. Um, we have weekly office hours. Um, I absolutely love doing these uh, every Friday, uh, and that uh, facility is open to any founder across Ireland, no matter what development stage you're at. And I have heard every question under the sun from I had an idea in the car on Wednesday to I think my CTO is stealing from me. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, nothing nothing is too out there, um, and we're, we're really happy to help. Um, uh, Founder Weekend takes those ideas from uh, zero to one uh, over 48 really intense hours. Can I get a show of hands in the room how many people have done Founder Weekend? Yeah, half the hands go up. <laughs> and then many of those teams go on to uh, participate in the pre-accelerator, which is the teams uh, that you're seeing here today. Uh, we also run the uh, NDRC Accelerator uh, twice a year. Uh, this comes with tons of mentoring support uh, and that magic 100,000 euro safe note. Um, and then, of course, there's the masterclasses, and the masterclasses are for the folks like me um, and for many of the, the mentors and community folks in the room here. This helps, us, this helps us make us better at 
helping you. Um, so we do this to try to uh, bring up the entire ecosystem uh, with programs like um, mentoring, angel investing, startup legals, accounting, uh, corporate innovation, uh, how to raise around. Um, I've taken every single one of these classes, some of them twice. <laughs> I always get something out of them and I'm looking forward to uh, hearing some of the new programs for 2023. There's one happening every month. Um, the Accelerator, as I mentioned, we have two programs. The, um, the deadline for applications for our, uh, our January program has closed. Selection processes are ongoing, um, but that program will kick off in January. Uh, and if you love events like this, the, um, the demo day will be taking place in April. We'll then reopen recruitment uh, in the spring, early summer um, for the program to kick off in August. So there is an another opportunity, another two opportunities to apply for the NDRC Accelerator next year. Um, founder weekend for those early stage teams or even for folks that are uh, kind of going back to revisit their customer um, or try out a new idea. Um, uh, we will be opening applications in January. This is the first uh, NDRC um, early stage support you can uh, apply for in 2023. Um, and that event will be uh, delivered uh, fully virtually from the RDI hub. Um, Founder Weekend, we are moving uh, some of us hybrid, some of us uh, purely face-to-face. -face. So we'll be going to uh, Dublin in April, the Republic of Work in May, and back here to the, the Porter Shed in September. September. <laughs> and finally, uh, the pre-accelerator um, is always virtual to accommodate teams from all over Ireland. And we really, really do have folks from all over Ireland and Paris. <laughs> um, uh, so we're going first to the RDI hub. These are kind of following the founder weekends. Um, then to Dogpatch Labs in Dublin, uh, Republic of Work, and finally our own program, October to December, which means that we will be doing this exact same showcase again next year. And you're all, of course, very welcome. Um, for more and to get signed up for updates, find out when the programs are happening, just follow NDR, at ndrc.ie, um, give them a little tweet um, and sign up to hear more. So that's 2023. Back to today. Uh, we're going into our final group of startup pitches and I'll see you all on the other side. Make some noise in the chat. <laughs> Hello, I'm Kim McKay, CEO of Bumblebee Air, plug and play technology that is as easy to use as stacking Lego blocks. Our software as a service offering allows non-technical CEOs and teams to easily build online platforms that can scale their business quickly. So what's the problem we're solving? Our customer, Sarah, is CEO of an amazing Irish scale up doing 2 million annual turnover. She knows customers and learning about their needs. She's growing five nutrition centers in Ireland, but can't get to the US. And that could be her biggest market, because the only thing Sarah doesn't do is tech. It's a big problem. Technical debt is crippling her business. She had a bad CTO hire and can't source tech talent. She's losing money on developers because she can't keep up with the pace of tech. Now, poor resource allocation means she's not hitting milestones. Investor targets are being missed. It's a disaster for everyone, especially Sarah. Introducing Bumblebee Air, plug and play technology like Lego for Sarah to build her platform. Now she's upheld by a virtual CTO and 10 tech experts on demand in her platform. She's using AI and machine learning without even knowing it. Bumblebee Air has the potential to disrupt industries and create new ones. How we make money is simple. We have a percentage for every transaction that runs on the platform. Monthly subscriptions to plug and play DevOps for on demand product development. And our profits get an uplift from partner reseller agreements with Big Tech. Our global TAM with DevOps, digital marketing, and metaverse combined is 400 billion. DevOps alone stands at 17 billion today, of which we can access 1 billion through our existing channels into EU, MENA, and US. Bottom up, we could obtain 500 million in Ireland and the UK because we are on target to achieve 0.6% worth 3 million euro in five years, offering an exciting 10x return. And we have competitors like BoatYardX, who recently got bought two weeks ago, showing movement in the market. We have a smart second mover advantage over our main competitor, Bold.io. Our advantage is Sarah's. It's the Irish advantage at 50% lower DevOps costs than the competition. So why trust in us? As CEO, I've launched five SaaS products. I know what it takes to get from concept to market. I'm an award winner with Bank of Ireland Network Service Delivery and a National Demo Day winner with NDOC. Our CTO, Mohammed and I have worked together for seven years full-time. We communicate well and love building platforms. We helped our last startup raise one million seed. 
Another requires Smith as a customer to target 10 million orders annually. And our latest prospect is with Irish Central's 45 million social media impressions per month in New York. We do big, we do global. Over the last 36 months, we invested 204K. We generated 10K monthly recurring revenue. And we did this by working with a small subset of customers to demonstrate usability and retention. Next, we're applying to NDRC to launch our SaaS platform and to grow our team to onboard more customers. It's going to be a big year for Bumblebee Air and customers like Sarah. We hope you'll invest in us too. Thank you. Hi guys, my name is Sean Cleary. I'm a street food fanatic and a serial entrepreneur. Over the past three years, I've set up over 130 street food and coffee businesses, supplying everything from the food truck to the industry training and knowledge. The street food industry is thriving globally, worth 25 million euro a year, 160 million euro in Ireland alone. But what's terrifying is, for such a lucrative industry, it remains totally fragmented and largely unregulated. And as far as compliance goes, most processes are still paper-based, outdated, and not fit for purpose. This poses a huge problem for government bodies, event organizers, and legitimate vendors. It's a minefield. We are a verified vendor, and we've created a solution to the huge regulatory compliance issues surrounding the street food industry in a holistic manner. So unlike existing applications which focus solely on the food safety process or the insurance documentation, we've created a platform that incorporates all of the five main pillars of industry compliance. For the vendor, we offer cloud storage for the main compliance documentation, which can be sent or requested in a clip of button. Currently, this process can take hours, even a week in peak season. Our platform will also eliminate current time and resources, which are being wasted on sheets of paperwork and documentation. And it also we use a variety of fraud detection methods to ensure documents are authentic, but also kept up to date. The vendor can then showcase their compliance, building trust with their customers and inspectors alike. For private event organizers and government bodies, they get access to the world's largest database of verified vendors. So the global street food industry is worth 25 billion a year without considering other mobile vendors and caterers. Also, due to the prioritization and rise in costs of compliance, the reg tech industry is forecasted to grow 20.8% year on year for the next four years to 20 billion euro per annum. Verified vendor is a SaaS subscription model with multi-tiered pricing for the vendors themselves, but also for enterprise and government usage. There's also potential for one-off consultancy fees and even advertising. Although there's currently no competition in the mobile vending space, we're seeing similar solutions being implemented across other industries, such as construction, healthcare, and childcare. So in just eight short weeks, we've interviewed dozens of vendors, event organizers, and local authorities. These are all contacts from an existing company, Street School. We're also in the process of developing our MVP, which we're hoping to pilot in early 2023. As far as our team goes, I'm an expert within the street food industry with a master's in food science, and I've also spent the last five years building my own street food business and helping 130 others set up room. Maria, my co-founder, has been in and worked on accelerator programs and holds a degree in computer science and business. With our existing industry expertise, paired with our technical skill set, we believe Verified Vector can help solve the centuries-old problem of street food regulation and compliance. If you or someone you know can benefit from these solutions, we'd love for you to get in touch. Thank you. I'm Niamh O'Callaghan, founder of Maxiomarks, a self-directed educational tool helping students to develop good educational habits. This is my daughter, Emma. She's just finished her master's and she is the very reason why Maxiomarks exists today. It was her experience of the education system that spurred me on to find out why students weren't getting the grades that they deserved. 237 interviews and 18 months later, my, my research highlighted that students are fundamentally lacking the skill set that is required for education and it's not on the curriculum. It's not thought. So I created Max Your Marks. With input from students, teachers and advocacy groups, we have developed an app that I am proud to say is now available for download on iOS and Android. We created tools to help all students, but specifically those with learning differences, to, to learn, think and time.
This is our exam feature. It operates on a traffic light system. So students can see where they are progressing on an, on an exam question and on the overall exam. We also have a CAO calculator, a habit tracker and a scheduler. And our supporting platform provides proven study methods such as what you see here to help students to learn how to study effectively and learn efficiently. The team is made up of myself, Neve O'Callaghan. Uh, I have decades of experience in finance and a master's in taxation. Camille is all things tech. My advisory board are serial entrepreneurs and experts in their field. And I have my education advisors in Jackie, who is a teacher, and Ellie, who is a student. Our business model is a SaaS model, and we're going to start with B2C, focusing on parents as the customer and the student as the user. Our TAM Sam and Sam is focusing on post-primary students with learning differences in Ireland. We aim to capture 10% of this market with the help of ADHD Ireland and Dyslexia Ireland. Ours, however, is a global ambition. So our, we aim to jump into the market that is learning disabilities and is worth $18.65 billion and climbing. Our competitive analysis is a competitor analysis, but we also see a gap currently filled by trainers who are brought into schools for half a day and teaching one learning method. Max Remarks is a fundamental support to traditional theoretical methods of education. And when you combine Max Remarks with traditional methods, we close the circle of support for students. Max Remarks is about leveling the playing field and giving every student the opportunity to reach their potential. Thank you. We are Fergus and Alex, the co-founders of Aggregate, a double-sided platform for farmers trading with each other, reducing administration time and making farming simpler. Let's introduce our customers. Our seller, a tillage farmer who grows barley and sells the grain to a mill. However, they now have a secondary product, straw, which they want to sell. Our buyer, a dairy farmer who sells milk to the creamery. They now need straw to feed their animals during the winter. At present, a simple transaction of our tillage farmer selling one load of bales to our buyer can require 10 interaction points over six different media. Multiple phone calls, entries in diaries, text messages, arranging delivery, raising invoices and chasing payment are real pain points for our customers. No platform tackles this problem and facilita facilitates this trade other than traditional methods resulting in misunderstandings about agreements and excessive time spent on administration. Very simply, we are making trading between our seller and our buyer easier. Introducing Aggregate, a double-sided platform for the agri-sector. A truly paperless solution that streamlines the process, allowing users to place and track orders, plan deliveries, request and settle payment. In essence, reducing the administration and time taken by farmers in operating their business, consolidating all of the processes into one end-to-end -end solution. In Ireland alone, the value of products sold between farmers is 110 million euros per year and engages with over 8,000 buyers, with an opportunity to scale across additional products, sectors and countries. So, who are we up against? Our main competitor is the Humble Diary. Farmers' go-to source of record-keeping and a central hub for managing the transaction from start to finish. Aggregate takes the ease and comfort of your diary and places it in your pocket. Other startups such as Graindex, who target the primary product market, and AgDrive, who target the contractor services market, are beginning to address this inefficiency. However, there is still no solution for the end-to-end -end management of the secondary product market. Our target market are small to medium sellers who currently operate without any solution. The primary revenue model is driven by sellers subscribing to the platform. The buyer operates free on the service with additional premium features available. Additional revenue is driven by listing speed and sponsored content. To date, we have established a concept, began validation and identified users who will participate as part of a pilot program. Next, we are going to build an MVP and test it. The team are myself, Fergus, who grew up on a farm and has first-hand experience in all of these issues. I'm a qualified accountant and company managing director. Alex, who has a background of product design and communications, experience of working in startups, and is currently overlooking marketing operations for a tech company. We are looking to recruit a CTO to build a solution. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Shalendra Tomar, CEO of Preflat, a clean tech startup. Today, I'm going to show how we reduce building carbon footprint with data and AI. Did you know that last year there were 350 million people were affected by power outages? This has increased tenfold. Building alone where our focus is consume majority of the world's energy, producing one third of the carbon emission. If we go deeper in this problem, 90% of the building do not have BMS EMX. And according to EU reports, they are inefficient. We can see there is a potential to see a save up to 30% of the consumption, which is not happening. Companies which feel this pain that we are working with, such as environmental and facility companies, infrastructure and utilities are feeling this pain. Uh, our solution harness the energy data uh, with AI in building so that we can reduce cost, predict disruption, and optimize consumption so that we can contribute toward net zero emission. Our solution is a software as service platform. As you can see on the screen on the right, uh, we monitor the consumption, uh, detect uh, the anomaly, uh, then give a clean measure so that we can reduce the consumption. Uh, using our machine learning model, we combine various sources of data, such as asset, weather, satellite, indoor, and even the historic interruption. We are ahead of our competitors uh, as competitor focus on a specific uh, area. We ca capture the entire value chain and on top of that, we give action. So if your consumption is higher using our uh, uh, energy consumption major, you can actually see the real time happening the uh, dip. About the market, uh, it's a billion dollar market. Uh, uh, and then according to our bottom up estimates, targeting 1% of the market uh, using our software uh, as a service model uh, based on pub building and uh, success fee, we can generate 1.5 million ARR. Uh, our team is truly international. We come from various backgrounds, software engineers, data scientists, business developers. We have worked in past with big companies uh, and we are very passionate about energy and sustainability. So the main important part is we have the capacity to deliver. Uh, we have got visibility across Europe. Uh, we are among top international startup in EU Accelerator program. Uh, we have been to several events in, in Europe. We're surrounded by leading industry partners and in startup ecosystem. Uh, about our roadmap, we already have a platform with uh, two customers. We are serving several pilots. In the near term, we want to have 10 paid pilots converting five clients, and then we can replicate this model to million in building uh, uh, across Europe. And in, to do that, we need to have uh, funding. That is one of our key priority for next year. Uh, if we follow this path, we can become the best energy efficiency uh, intelligence company in the world. Thank you. Please help us making impact. Shalendra Tomer, Preflat. Hello, my name is Joseph, and I'm the founder of Smarketing Cloud. We're a marketing technology startup set to transform the sales and marketing industry. We have all heard the statistic. 90% of all new businesses fail. But did you know that ineffective marketing is one of the four main reasons why? Fragmented technology, teams, and processes are a huge culprit, and it's costing companies billions each year. We're on a mission to fix that. Nowadays, consumers are interacting with companies online through many different devices and channels. This makes it difficult for companies to reach and engage them effectively. As a solution, companies often employ the expertise of marketing agencies to help orchestrate a cohesive marketing strategy. Meet Maya, a typical marketing agency owner. Maya's agency has 20 business accounts, each account with a unique mix of sales and marketing tools that they use in-house. This can be overwhelming for Jacob, the account executive who feels like he's juggling 30 plus different client tools on a daily basis. Maya's team is stuck in an outdated and inefficient system. They're constantly overwhelmed at work and they can't seem to keep up. Her clients are unhappy and she risks losing them if she can't deliver value. This is a costly problem for Maya, both in terms of money and her team's well-being. Introducing Smarting Cloud, a single integrated platform that consolidates all your sales and marketing tools into one easy-to-use interface, streamlining customer data, multi-channel marketing, and agency operations. Our platform is already helping agencies improve their efficiency and bottom line. By providing better service to their clients, agencies using our platform are seeing reduced churn and increased profits. There are approximately 44,000 agency owners across our four regions who are in great need of our solution. Our goal is to capture 5% of this market within two years, which would represent 2,500 agencies active on our SaaS solution and generating approximately 9 million in annual recurring revenue. We are focused on agency owners as a beachhead market, but the opportunity is much bigger. After reaching our market goals and raising a Series A, 
we plan to serve the SME and enterprise market. This market is valued at 350 billion globally, and it's growing at a rate of 9% year on year. Now, our business model is simple. We offer a monthly SaaS license with paid add-ons. There are many other tools available on the market, most of which are single-purpose tools, which contribute to the complexity, or there are expensive enterprise solutions that have been stitched together over years of acquisitions and mergers. Smarketing Cloud is purpose-built from the ground up to be user-friendly, affordable, and powerful, without any sacrifice in functionality, power, or utility. My team consists of business development experts, cloud architects, DevOps specialists, and some incredible coders who have truly magical skills. They are a team of wizards who have worked hard to make the company the success it is today. In just two years, we've built a product that's been used in 29, um, by 29 paying customers across four countries. We're generating 12,000 in monthly recurring revenue. And that's it. I'll gladly answer any questions you have. Hi, I'm Maura, and I'm one of the co-founders of Quirkly. Have you ever had to buy a gift or pick up a bottle of wine on the way to a friend's for dinner, only to find yourself standing in front of a wall of wine, lost, confused, and paralyzed by choice? Fortunately for me, when I find myself in these situations, I call my go-to wine guy and co-founder Gannon, and he helps me pick the right bottle at the right price for the right occasion. We know not everyone has a Gannon, but what if they could? Introducing Quirkly a platform that seamlessly connects wine-curious and wine-confused consumers with our team of wine experts and sommeliers, who we call our pocket psalms, to help navigate the wine world by offering bespoke expert wine advice straight from our friendly pocket psalm team via chat or call, Corkly exclusive wines curated by the pocket psalms, and seamless purchase and delivery. So how is Corkly different from other wine outlets? For those newer to wine, walking into a specialty shop can be intimidating, and even though they offer great advice, it's not something most people are comfortable doing. On the other hand, general market e-com sites like Wine.com and Vivino offer far more generic advice and so many wines that most people don't know where to start. Corkley bridges this gap by offering accessible, friendly advice via our pocket psalms with the convenience of online shopping and delivery. While the global wine market is massive, we are initially focused on Ireland and the UK, where wine sales reached 16.9 billion in 2021. Since the vast majority of wine sold in these markets is through discounters like Aldi and Tesco, we are basing our SAM on specialty shop and e-com sales, which hit 4.1 billion last year, since these are more akin to the Corkley experience. In five years time, we believe Corkley can capture 1% of this market, offering a SAM of 41 million euro. In terms of Corkley's business model, we are initially focused on capturing an average of 30% margin on wholesale wine we procure and sell. Additional revenue potential exists via Corkley community membership and a B2B plugin that's still in development. So where are we today? Well, we've interviewed more than 90 potential customers, investors, and wholesale partners, and have a growing list of more than 25 people that have found Corkley organically and have signed up for our weekly newsletter, which launches this week. We are also wrapping up initial platform development with the goal of having our MVP available to consumers here in Ireland by the end of the year. From there, we'll be testing features with our early users, growing our customer base, and generating revenue. In terms of our team, Gannon is our resident sommelier and head of industry with more than a decade of hospitality experience. While I'm tasked with all things business development, given my nearly 20 years growing and scaling tech businesses in the U.S., and Kian leads all platform development, thanks to his extensive experience building products for early stage startups. So if you're wine curious, confused, or an enthusiast, we invite you to join us at Corkly.wine. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, we're into our final segment now that we all have a glass of wine on the mind. <laughs> uh, please indulge me for just another two or three minutes. Um, uh, in the last uh, section, I looked uh, ahead to 2023. Now I'm going to look back, uh, which I think is a, a fantastic thing to do at this time of the year, um, and reflect on the successes of some of the previous participants of the pre-accelerator. Um, 
Maria in Data Hub was named the Planners Women of Influence 2022 and also won Visa Ireland's She's Next 50,000 euro grant. Um, if anybody would like to start taking a tally on the money, um, <laughs> I don't pretend it's all of it, but it's pretty impressive. Uh, Emma in Precision Sports Technology, their pilot launched uh, in the last few weeks and is now underway at the University of Limerick. So you can ask Emma about it in the networking section. Um, validation also for Maria in Emotionize, um, one of our 2021 teams. The MVP for their AI tech has been independently reviewed by the Nimbus Research Center uh, at uh, Munster Technical University. Uh, we Are Riley won Irish Tattler's Woman of the Year Innovation Award, and I have definitely spotted Riley on the shelves uh, in my local Lidl. Um, we always recognize a few faces in the Irish Independence 30 Under 30, which I think is a really fabulous sign of the emerging talent in our community. This year we have Carla from Barter Chain, Alex and Kerry from Tally Subscriptions, Claire from Talia Therapy, Emmett from Ecode, Carl from Store Hero, just completed the last cohort, Jack Owen and Luke in Vira, and Evelyn and Brandon in BioWave. Um, speaking of BioWave, who did the, the Q1 pre-accelerator this year, um, BioWave has just been named the overall winner of the Intertrade Ireland Seed Corn Investor Readiness Competition. Uh, it's Kim's 40th birthday. <laughs> Why did you tell me? <laughs> um, Hiker raised a 500,000 euro round in July, led by Fuel Ventures and backed by Enterprise Ireland. And finally, Brendan and Emma in Amara Therapeutics and the rest of their team have been awarded the Disruptive Technologies Innovation Fund that is 1.5 million to fund Resolve, a digital therapeutic for overactive bladder. Now you can clap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're going to post um, a feedback link in the chat uh, for everybody in the room. Please take a moment to review today's event. Uh, let us know what you thought. Feedback is a gift. Um, and uh, for anybody that is in the room, you are not allowed any pizza until you review the event. <laughs> uh, I won't bore you all with too many thank yous. Um, I do want to reiterate Mary's thanks um, of the NDRC team, uh, Eshna, May, Victoria, Gennaro, oh, Andre, what a guy, we love, we love Andre, uh, Jake, and the wider team, along with our incredibly supportive uh, CEOs um, uh, in the uh, Republic of Work, the RDI hub, um, Dog Patch Labs and our own Mary here in the Porter Shed. Um, I, I won't call out the entire Porter Shed team because we're growing now, it takes some time. Um, but I do want to uh, ask you all to spare a moment uh, for Dushant, who uh, joined the Porter Shed team the week before the program kicked off. And if Falcha would like to uh, ask somebody their opinion on onboarding, I'm sure he has some thoughts. <laughs> um, uh, he'll kill me, but I also want to especially call out Anthony, who uh, not only ran production live, today and online um, but basically built the building for you that you're standing in ran the community uh, and is going to kill me so I'm going to stop um, and actually I'm going to take a really big shortcut here because there are actually so many members of our community we have uh, Joe Smith I spotted one of the speakers from the program uh, my own board is here lots and lots of mentors so I'm just going to take a massive shortcut and thank you all uh, and to the really, really generous cohort for uh, all of your participation over the last six weeks. That's it. I'm putting on flat shoes. Everybody, <laughs> enjoy your day. And thank you all so much for joining us. Cool.